It's a man's drink. That's why I'm not drinking it. I got this. Oh, I'm getting a bottle of this. <laughs> We're up to three bottles now. What? Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. I think they have a, spe a special price for six bottles. Do they now? So we get the two that we want and mm -hmm. the rest the Tempranillo. Yeah. You become a big mathematician after drinking <laughs> a couple of wine, huh? You know financials. I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. It's my strength. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. What it do, my moochins? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we just crossed the state line to New Mexico, and the first thing that I wanted to do was a happy hour Friday in this wonderful winery called Sombra Antigua. Sí. And the reason why is because they have Tempranillo and Albariño grapes in here. Yeah, so for those that have no idea what that is, such as myself, let her tell you all about it. <laughs> so these both type of grapes are typical from Spain, and I grew up with them, so I love them. Uh, usually Tempranillo, are um, the grapes that give us the red wine. So that's the one that we usually use for Riojas and Ribera del Dueros. And then Alvariño are the one from the north, specifically from Galicia, which is the one that uh, we take for white wine and oysters and all this kind of seafood. And I just love, it's the only white wine that I love. So I'm excited to have a try. Yeah, so that's what we're doing here today. <laughs> Immediately when she found this place, it was, we're doing a happy hour Friday here. We're doing a happy hour Friday here. They have Tempranillo in blah, 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 whatever the other wine grape is. I have Alvariño. No yeah, that, so. <laughs> but anyway, this place looks amazing. And right now they have two different types of uh, tasting, wine tastings. And one is $5 and the other one is 15. The difference is you get, you, both of them you get to try five different types of wine. Yes, yes, five. <laughs> but for the $15 one, you actually get a souvenir glass, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So while we wait for our first drink, we're gonna show you this beautiful winery. Yep, Domino's. let's go. So how amazing is this place? So guys, we're still deciding on our wines, and while we go through our choices of the selections that they have here for the tasting, we decided to wet our palates with some beer. And right now, I got the Bosque, and yes. I'm trying, I have no idea what kind of beer, how this thing tastes. But it looks peachy, so it, it's it your does. kind. It's, it's my color, it got my color. It definitely got my color. But let's see what happens now. It's not that strong. It's nice and light. It's good. I can, I can enjoy this. This is a beer that you can just... I won't say it will go with a pizza or anything like that. It's just one of those chill moments. When you, afternoon beer. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like an afternoon beer. Perfect way to describe it. Yeah. What he doesn't know is that while he was setting up all the camera and everything, I tried it. Oh, really? So I would add to that beer that is a little bit fruity. So it has like a fruit flavor at the end. Of course end. it is. That's why I like it. They already know this. <laughs> they know this already. It has to be fruity. All right, guys. So I picked the IPA. So as you probably all know, IPAs have a higher concentration of alcohol and it has a method and a lot of beautiful history from the British beers to the Indian trail. But anyway, let me try it. IPA. It must be nice when you don't have to worry about driving that you can try beers with extra alcohol content. Okay. So I really like it. Is it good? Uh, yes, it is really good. And it has like a bitter flavor at the end. So I could feel it like right here oh, so it gets at you the in end. There? No, not right here. Uh, right here. Oh, like by the tongue. I have to try this now. 
Oh, he lied to me. <laughs> oh, oh. She lied to me. <laughs> so anyway, it's good though. <laughs> really nice beer, bitter, it has that bitter taste to it. It's but it's nice. very crispy too, so it's really great for a day like today because it's hot outside. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with my fruity drink here. <laughs> This is okay, good. finish it up because we got to start with the wines. All right, let's get to the wines. I'm not going to survive this, but <laughs> Vominos. <laughs> In. <laughs> So I already told you how excited I am about this place, but now I'm even a little bit more because we have David and Teresa here with us uh, who are going to tell us a little bit more about Sombra Antigua Winery. We are a family winery. Okay. Uh, we purchased this land in uh, 2008. And this is actually the oldest commercial vineyard in New Mexico. Uh, this was the uh, original site of Lavinia. Okay. Uh, it was another winery just down the road. This winery vineyard was started in the mid 1970s by a professor from the University of Texas El Paso, a guy named Clarence Cooper. He's a physics professor, a winemaker, a musician, kind of a <laughs> Renaissance man. Still Jack around. Trade. Still around. Uh, but he started the winery, and there were three wineries started that year. This is the only one that survived. Most people don't realize that New Mexico was the largest wine producing area in North America up until about 1900. Was it? Between 19, 1890 and 1900, New Mexico produced over a million gallons a year of wine. Over a million gallons. That yeah. is tremendous. And they did that for a long time. Very well received wine. It was uh, made wine everywhere from uh, El Paso all the way to uh, Santa Fe. We produce everything from mom and pop, which we're not far from that. Mom and pop uh, handcrafted uh, still wines, all up through world class uh, champagne method, sparkling wines. Yeah. Uh, so we, have, we have 12 wineries on the road, Highway 28 already, yes. in this area. In this area, and this is this is the Mesilla Valley Appalachian, yes. and so it, it's a, it stands on its own. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we started this, uh, as I said, it was a kind of a thing I wanted to do, you know, it was either a bookstore or a winery, I wasn't sure which, so we did this, this wine. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you, how one come to the idea of, I want to have a winery? <laughs> this was, uh, you know, the land was available at the right time, we went ahead, we didn't live far from here, and so she didn't come along kicking and screaming. <laughs> Part of the success of our 50 years together has been uh, my lack of anchoring and her firm stand on things. And that sounds familiar. Out, yeah, it, it has worked out well. Good, so along, we have a bright future. <laughs> yes, it's along the way, our kids join us in this. Okay, uh, good. Like a lot of families this day and age, ours were kind of drifting mm -hmm. different directions. And immediately when we announced we were going to do it, our son sold his house and moved out. And our daughter... This was, this was a city boy who said he would never live outside the city. And he moves to the country and he gets on a tractor. Yeah, so I'm from it New happens. York, and that's how I felt. I never wanted to go to Spain. And knowing she's from Spain, her whole thing was, we're going to retire in Spain. And I'm like, there's nothing out there. Why would we do that? Last year we went to Spain and she took me all over. She took me to the north, the studios, we went down to Malaga, Seville, Madrid. I'm ready to retire in Spain now. <laughs> and, and in the north too, in the countryside. And I'll totally be countryside. Yeah. Total countryside up here. Beautiful country. Yes. At least the pictures I've seen. She's been. Mm -hmm. oh, I haven't been here. Oh, oh you have to go. You have to go. <laughs> you have to. It's almost against the law for you not to yes. have gone and you have. We do have great <laughs> time. Without buddy and years and, and yeah. <laughs> All right, my moochins, what an amazing winery here. <laughs> 
I'm glad she got to try what she wanted. She had a great time, right? Yes, I love this happy hour Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we might have to add some more wineries to happy hour Fridays, along with bars and restaurants. But yes. guys, it's gonna do it for us. And David and Theresa, am I saying Theresa, yes. Theresa have been a wonderful host. This yes. is an amazing winery, so much history. Love the family feeling mm -hmm. that you have when you come in here. Yep. And it's just awesome. Like, you definitely gotta stop by. If you cross that state line, this is the first stop you gotta make. Yeah. If you're cool. looking for winery trails, there's a winery um, trail here in New Mexico, and it starts right here in the borderline, not in the border, in the state line, I'm state sorry. Line. In the state line with um, Texas, so that's great. But also, the good thing about this place is that they're part of the Harvest Host. Um, so if you have an RV, you're traveling around with an RV, you can spend the night here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And they're open from Thursday to Sunday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they can open by appointment, but you have to call them and make arrangements. They host any kind of events, weddings, everything and anything. So they just want to make you feel at home and make your party and your event like the bestest of the best. And don't forget every Saturday and Sunday, they have live entertainment. Yeah. And it's oh, amazing. It yeah. is. All right, so we are going to close out with this sparkling wine. Oh yeah, we got some sparkling. Figure we tone it down, get some sparkling, and try it off. Yes. So give this video a like if you enjoy wine, love wineries, enjoy us getting tipsy as usual, meeting new people, learning new history, me making some sour faces from the stuff that I've been tasting, or whatever she makes me drink. <laughs> Subscribe to Travel More with us, but as always, remember to live the life you want, love the life you live, and travel. Mamu, just out. This wine is another Malbec. Mm -hmm. It's a Malbec Barbera again. And again, started out, it's a, uh, we didn't let it go through full maturation. And then we went ahead and sweetened it a bit. So it's a semi-sweet. And because it's, it's like a rosé, this wouldn't be officially a rosé, but it walks like a rosé. It talks like a rosé. So we call it a rose. And so we call it desert rose. Now what we did for a desert rose is, that's what this is called. This is a geological uh, structure, and they call it a desert rose. And so we use that as the rose in the back. Oh, Our son, that is amazing. Can I touch it? Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we're both engineers. Uh -huh. Our daughter's an engineer. She's married to an engineer. So nice. usually, all in, the, all in the family. usually if you wanted to have an interesting conversation, you'd be talking with your son because he's a great uh, he, does the, he does all the things. Yeah, all the artwork up here is his. It's beautiful. We were talking about it when we walked yeah, in. The logo he designed and these labels in the back. Now, I had originally come up with a, uh, a very conservative label with this on it, single color, the names, and very conservative. But if I let he and his mother work on these uh, unsupervised I get labels <laughs> like this. So, and then I have noticed uh, lately that my conservative label, if I get looking real close, the reprints, he has always, he's put a watermark in the back with his artwork. So I give up. <laughs> so, You're like, okay, whatever. You're part of the business and I'm thankful for that. <laughs>